Hello people, this is Phil. I'm going to take a little break from my x86-64 assembly language programming videos and introduce this new project, uh, building an assembly or building a virtual machine from scratch. Uh, the purpose of this project is to illustrate how a computer works. Uh, so we're going to be able to explore this by creating a very simple uh, machine or computer on our own. And so instead of going heavily into theory uh, at first, what we're going to do is build a minimum viable virtual machine uh, right off the bat. And so we're in our workspace. So if you have your workspace set up, it's empty right now. And we're going to create a file. Uh, and we're going to call it, uh, we're going to actually create a, a class, a stack virtual machine class, because I like uh, stack machines and they're very simple to implement. So our uh, virtual CPU will be a stack machine. So we're going to create stack vm.cpp. Actually, let's start off with the h file. And what we're going to do is um, a little bit of housekeeping and create something called stack uh, vm h okay uh, now we'll uh, do some includes and what we're going to do is we're going to include uh, for now iostream since we want to see what's going on inside our virtual machine, we're going to want to print some stuff out. And then we're also going to include vector because we're going to use vector vector a lot. Okay, so now that we've got those out of the way, let's actually uh, define, um, uh, let's do our type definitions. We'll do type definitions. And for right now, we're only going to have one type. So we'll do a type def, and we'll do int32, um, and we'll we're basically creating a signed integer of 32 bits um, size, and everything in our virtual machine, at least for right now, will be 32 bits in size for simplicity. Then we'll go ahead and create our class. We're going to call it stack vm. And uh, let's go ahead and create uh, some registers for ourselves. So um, even though this is a stack machine, we're going to have a little some registers that will store some information for us. So we're going to have a program counter, and we're just going to start it off at address 100. We'll probably end up changing this later. Then we're going to have a stack pointer. Uh, which will start at address 0. And then let's create... Um, oh, let's create our memory. So this will be the memory uh, that our virtual CPU will access. And then uh, we're going to create a couple more registers. Um, these aren't typical in normal virtual machines, but we're gonna uh, create them for to create some simplicity for our machine. Uh, we're gonna have a type and a data register, and then we're also gonna have a register that tells us whether we're still running. So all of these things are private, and let's now create a. Um, Oh, let's let's create some functions. So let's create some private functions that we're going to use for our stack VM class. And uh, one of the things that we'll need to do, uh, I'll explain a little bit of this later, but we're going to need a get type function that will be able to take a uh, token from our uh, from our machine or an instruction. Actually, let's just let's actually just call it an instruction. And uh, we'll need to be able to get uh, the 
the type of that instruction. We'll also get the data from our instruction. And the way that our instructions will work is we're actually going to combine our data with our instructions. And we'll illustrate that a little bit later. Uh, the other things that we'll need to do is uh, a CPU that essentially runs in an infinite loop and it performs three operations over and over until it halts. And those three operations are fetch, uh, decode, and execute. Now we're not going to put all of our um, execution code inside execute. So uh, what we're going to do instead actually, is we're going to have a nice little helper function for right now called do primitive. And that's how we're going to we're going to put a lot of our code there uh, for executing instructions. Now let's create uh, some public members. Uh, let's do, we'll do public functions. And uh, those will be a constructor. And we'll also need some way to run our machine. So we'll have a uh, run function. And then we'll also have a load program function, which will allow us to uh, initialize our memory because we're going to need some way to initialize our memory um, for our per virtual CPU to run. Then at the end here we're going to create an end if and that is our header file. So let's go ahead and create our CPP file. And in our CPP file, we're going to include our stack vm.h file. And then let's see, let me take a look at my notes because this is a little bit more complicated project. So we're going to have our stack vm. And then we're going to, uh, we're going to implement our functions. So we're going to have our, let's go ahead and implement our constructor. And all it will do is uh, reserve some memory for us. And we're going to go ahead and reserve um, a million words of memory. Uh, we may use more in the future, but for right now that's pretty good. Uh, then what we're going to do is uh, let's let's do our get type function. All right, thirty-two. We're going to have an instruction, and what we'll do is we'll create um, let's see, let's create a type, and we're actually going to use a hexadecimal value here. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. Uh, essentially, uh, since everything is 32 bits, uh, each, uh, every two characters is a uh, byte in hexadecimal. So we've got one byte, two bytes, three bytes, four bytes. So we've got 32 bits. Now, Let's do type. Let's actually do something with this. We'll do type and we'll we'll bitwise and it with our function and we'll shift it 30 bits. And so what we're going to do here, now I should explain how our instructions work. The way our instructions will work is every instruction has essentially a two bit header which says what sort of instruction it is. And the way we're going to encode our instructions, in fact, I should probably maybe put a, um, 
there we go, instruction format. So two, um, we'll have a header, which will be two bits, and then we'll have a body, or uh, data, I guess, which will be 30 bits. And our header format will be, uh, if it's a zero, then it's a positive integer. If it's a one, then it will be a uh, primitive instruction. And if it's a two, uh, it will be a negative integer. If it's a three, right now, that's undefined. So we'll say undefined. So that is how our instructions will work. Um, whoops, actually, there we go. Uh, in fact, whoops. Yeah, that'll work. So that is how our instructions will will work. Our instructions will have two bits uh, in the front, which will tell us what type it is, and a data, which is 30 bits. Now there is a reason behind the madness for this, is it makes our instructions fairly compact. And then the reason we have these numbers, say zero for a positive integer, is suppose the first two bits are zeros, then the other 30 bits are our number. Well, then if we look at that as as just a 32-bit integer, it will actually be a positive 32-bit um, integer. And uh, this negative number, uh, remember two in binary, is one zero. So if the first two bits is a one and a zero, the first bit um, of our 32-bit instruction is a 1, we can interpret it as a negative number. Uh, so that just makes things very convenient. Now having a 1 in here, uh, uh, we've defined that at, to be a primitive instruction and that will be an executable instruction that we will work on. So let's go ahead and that will make more sense as we go along, so let's go ahead and create our other uh, function called getData and it will also take an instruction of 32 bits and it will it will have data and what we'll do is we want to take 30 bits of it so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 I think that works and actually this needs to be a hexadecimal number and Let's see, what do we want to do with it? So our data will actually be data uh, uh, with a binary and with our instruction. Okay, then, oh, we also want to return. So let's do that. We'll return our type. And at the very end here, we'll return our data, which will be 30 bits uh, of our instruction, the bottom 30 bits. Now let's go ahead and create our uh, main functions to run our program. So we'll create our, um, let's see, what, oops, we'll create our fetch function. And our fetch function will simply be uh, incrementing our program counter. That's simple enough. Our, then we will have our decode function. That's a little bit more complicated. What we're going to do is to decode our, uh, to decode our instruction, what we'll do is set our type. Remember this was our, remember with TYP, is a register and we're going to fill it with the information get type 
and we'll look at our memory at our program counter. So we're looking at the instruction, we're essentially getting the instruction from memory and um, getting its type. Oh, this needs to be like this. Get data. We'll look at the same instruction, the program counter, and that's it for decoding our instruction. Now, we need to execute our instruction. And this is where we have to do a little bit of decision making. So we're gonna say if the type of our instruction is a zero, which means if it's a positive integer or if it's a negative integer, so if our type is two, we want to uh, we actually want to integrate um, or uh, increment our stack pointer and we want to set the, um, the top of our stack to data. Now this is a little bit different from uh, normal assembly languages and computers that have a stack. Normally um, the stack grows downward. Uh, what we're going to do is our stack is going to start at um, address zero in memory and move upward, at least for now. Uh, and it's um, an interesting way of looking at it, a little bit different way. But it will work. So then otherwise, if it's not a number, We'll do a primitive. And that's it for our executing the stack. Now, uh, for the real meat of our program will be this do primitive, which in a CPU would be, I guess, the equivalent of the um, control mechanism. So we're going to do that. We're going to do stack VM do primitive. And we're just going to have a big switch statement on our data. And we're going to do a case. Actually, we'll, do, we'll have a case statement. So for zero, um, so now we need to design our instruction set, right? So our instructions uh, will, if, if, they, if the first two bits are a one, uh, the, the, the data the data of our instruction will actually be tell us what type of instruction that we have to run and so this is is sort of arbitrary we can set whatever numbers you want you can change yours to whatever you want them to be but for right now uh, what I'm going to do is zero is going to mean halt in our instruction set and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to show um, how this is working uh, we want to show the inner workings of this. So for now, we're going to say that we're going to print this out and tell ourselves when we're actually halting. And uh, what we want to do is we want to set the state uh, register, the running register, to zero to tell us that we're not running anymore. And then we want to break uh, uh, do a break uh, on our system. So actually maybe that should be there. Um, and then we'll do a case one and that is going to be add. Um, and the way that we're going to add things is we're going to print this out first. We're going to say that we're adding and we're going to show the numbers that we're adding. Uh, we'll get, we'll get um, our items from memory which we get from our stack because everything is put on the stack. And those are the two items from the stack that we'll be adding together. And then, okay, now we need to add them together. So we're going to actually get uh, our memory, address from memory. We're actually going to subtract one from it because uh, remember our stack is growing. And when we add two things together, we're going to pop two things off the stack add them together and put the answer back on the stack. So the way that we do that efficiently is to essentially take uh, uh, 
the uh, piece of the stack that's right below the top of the stack and we're going to set it to, to our answer and our answer is uh, our memory at stack pointer minus one plus our memory value at the stack pointer and then we're going to do a break there and then what we'll do is we'll just leave that for there so that will, that's the minimum that we need oh whoops that's the minimum we need to create our our system so now we've got a system that can add now let's see what else do we need we need to be able to run our program so we're going to create stack vm run and uh, what we're going to do is uh, remember up above here the first thing we do in in our system is we fetch an instruction and we fetch an instruction by incrementing our program counter so uh, the thing is is what when we load our program we're going to actually load it at the uh, our program counter so what we need to do is to bootstrap our system we need to set our program counter to be one minus whatever it was before so that way the first time we fetch uh, it's actually on the uh, count that we want it to be so what we're going to do is we're going to do while our processor is running oops while our processor is running we're going to fetch decode and execute our instructions and then let's go ahead and print out our top of the stack which is our uh, the value of our memory at our stack pointer okay so that is how we run the only thing that we have left to do is um, loading our program so that's what we need to do let's load our program or create our load program function and it's gonna just be a vector of 32-bit integers And we're going to use a for loop and our program for our program size we're going to loop through oops and all that we're going to do for that is set the value of our memory we're going to start at our program counter and add i to it and then set it to our program instruction at that location so that is how we load our program into memory so now we've got a uh, stack class implemented all right so let's create a program to actually utilize this stack machine that we've created so let's do vim main cpp and first thing we'll do is include stack vm dot h and then we'll create our main function uh, let's create a stack vm just call it vm then we'll create a vector a standard vector of 32-bit integers and this is going to be our program and what we're going to do is we're going to put 3 and 4 on the stack and then we're going to give it an instruction uh, let's see uh, 0 is halt and 1 is add so we're going to do um, we'll do add and then we'll do a halt instruction basically 
There we go. And then let's load this program. So into our virtual machine program. And then we can run our virtual machine. And then let's return zero. Okay, so now we've got now we've got a program created. And don't worry if you don't understand completely how these hex numbers work. I'm going to go over that next time. Let's go ahead and build a makefile for our system. So now we'll be able to compile and run our program. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll create let's see a let's, let's do a C flags and we're going to use the C++ 11 standard. Then let's build, let's create an all label, build stack VM, and then stack VM will be uh, stack VM dot O and main dot O. And then let's see, we're going to have our compiler, whatever our compiler is using. And we're going to have our C flags. Stack VM main dot O. And whoops. Our output will be stack VM. Our so our executable will be called stack VM. Now we need our main dot O, uh, which means we'll need main dot CPP. And we'll use our compiler flags. And then we'll let's see, we'll compile main CPP. Then we'll have stack vm.o, which needs stack vm.h, stack vm, whoops, dot cpp, and then we will also use our compiler and our compiling flags and stack vm.cpp and then we'll create a clean function which will just remove uh, all our .o files and stack vm all right so that's our that's our make file so let's go ahead and try to make this function so we've got some errors already Oh, I bet. Let's see. So let's take a look at stack VM CPP line 41. So it says that do primitive does not exist. Let's see. Oh, that's because we're missing a colon. Okay, so let's try that again. So do primitive was not declared in the scope, do primitive. Let's check it out. Ah, primitive is not spelled correctly. There we go. So now we have our stack VM executable if we run it, we see that our top of the stack was three, then our top of the stack was four, then we add three and four together. Uh oh, looks like we have another error. Didn't actually add three and four together. Top of the stack was four at the end, so we're gonna have to fix that. So let's go to our stack pointer let's see I bet we need to change our 
Yes. That's right. We need to change our stack pointer. So, let's go here. Stack pointer actually needs to decrement here. And the reason for that is our stack got one smaller. So, uh, the top of our stack is uh, now one less, or our stack size is one less than it used to be. So, let's make our program again. We'll run stack.vm, and now we have 3 plus 4 equals 7. So I know this was a very quick um, introduction. I didn't explain too much. But now we have a minimal virtual machine that we can play around with and add to. So next time we're going to explain, or I'm going to explain a little bit more about how the instructions work and how we're going to improve our virtual machine. Thanks for watching. Till next time.